All right, let's get into the word of God. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, this morning, I'm talking to you about faith that moves mountains. Faith that moves mountains. Faith that moves mountains. Brother Hagen will call it mountain moving faith. Faith that moves mountains. Faith that moves mountains. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 could be a good scripture to start from. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. And I want to really encourage you, when you come to church, always find something to write. Don't just come to church and just fold, just look at me that way. That's not a great way to come to church. So find something to write. The reason why is that whatever you hear alone, you retain just about 10% after three days. But if you put some effort into writing it down, you retain a larger percent. And the reason I'm saying so is that this kind of teaching you hear is life-changing. One, it's great to come to a church where they pray, but it's great to come to a church where the Word of God is taught in a way you can really understand it. And the power of writing is this. There are two things you write in the church. You write the not just from the message, but you also write the inspirations from the Holy Spirit. Because during the message, the Holy Ghost will begin to not you if i when i pray sometimes when i pray bruno i'm always like on my phone trying to write if I, on my phone i have a page because sometimes my notebook is not close by and they have my notebook i write there there's so inspiration the holy ghost wants to give you and today the holy ghost is going to give you so many inspirations it's going to awaken so many dreams in your heart in the name of the lord jesus christ all right faith into the four verse this is a message translation the king james says be not anxious for anything but the message i love it he says do not fret or worry now, the question is this, in the, old, in the New Testament, I want to give you a principle of Bible interpretation. In the New Testament, when God says, don't do something, God is not asking us that, don't do this or do this. That's not what God is saying. When God says, do this or do that, in the New Testament, he says that hoping you know that you don't have to do it because that's how you were made. Hallelujah. So in the New Testament, the New Testament has the principle called the mirror principle. What is the mirror principle? The mirror principle says, whatever God's word says is who I am. So when he says, do not fret, the reason, or do not be fearful, do not worry, he's letting you know that your nature does not worry. Your nature does not fret. We are not the people that are worry warriors. We are not the people that are afraid. Who are we? We are the people of faith. The way Bible says in Timothy is this. He said, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Can you see what I'm saying right now? So when he says God has not given us, it, it keeps revealing who you are to you. He says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of faith, of love, and of what? Sound mind. So the question today is this. Why are many Christians fearful? How come you're fearful that you wouldn't get married? How come you're fearful? You can, you can do deals of 10 million and 20 million, but when it comes to 200 million, then there's a fear that will grip your heart. How come you're fearful that sorrows will break your heart? How come you're fearful that your marriage will not work? How come you're fearful that the diagnosis of the doctor will kill you? How come you're fearful that because of the skyrocketing inflation, your life will be affected? Do you to read in the Bible in Jeremiah? What the Bible says, when others say there's a casting down, he said, we will say there is a lifting up. We are not called to, see, we are a people of faith. I understand that there are things that makes it look as if things are getting worse. But the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, he said, do not fret. He said, do not worry. Look at what he says. He said, instead of worry, pray. Let your petition. So the reason why we don't worry is because we understand how our faith can convert worry to testimonies. Oh, that's weak. Someone say amen. amen. We understand that. That our faith can convert worry to testimonies. We understand that our faith can move mountains. You have a lot of people that can't sleep at night. They can't sleep at night because the doctor told them, maybe you'll not have a child. Maybe they told them something about their own child. They said, this child will not be able to talk. There is a way you have faith and you understand that. The doctors can have a report, but there's a superior report. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, 
He says, whose report will you believe? That means that there are always different kind of what? Reports. There's a report from God. But there's a report from other things. There's a report from financial advisor. There's a report from your medical doctor. There's a report from your family. But he says, the question is this, whose report will you believe? He says, we shall believe the report of the Lord. What does the report of the Lord say? He said, the Lord will perfect that that concerneth you. So why am I living afraid? Why am I so fearful? And what I'm saying today is that that's not the way to live. There are a lot of guys here that need to get married. You know why they can't get married? They're just afraid they will not be able to take over family. Why are you so fearful? You are a person of faith. Why some people are not fearful? Some people cannot dream big. We're just drinking tiny dreams, just tiny dreams because, because we love to play safe, we love to play safe, we love to play safe. And, and it's amazing because the people that pray love to play safe and the people that do not pray take big risk. And you now wonder that who knows God? So in business, you're looking for, you're, you're trying to take a small risk here. And you're trying to take a small risk here. You're trying to take a small risk here. Don't you know what the Bible says? That all things are possible to him that believe it. When last did you stretch yourself beyond what you can do? Because you know God will come through. When last did you believe in your goals? Some people say, well, I've been trying, but I'm stuck. But that's why I need faith. Because my faith can move mountains. Faith is very powerful. Let me show you what the Bible says. James chapter 1. Someone say Hallelujah. James chapter 1. I remember when we had our second child and it was maybe about 3 or 4 when they began to talk. I can't remember the age. And it began to develop, it began to develop as if it was on a spectrum of one of those children's sicknesses. And my wife thought I did not notice it. But I noticed it because when he's talking, if you want to say that, is it you know, the, the word would bend. <laughs> so I noticed it, but you know, but I believe the report of the Lord. So one day my wife now said, you know, we need, we, you will need to really pray for him because she was informing me. And I said to her, I said, it is well. There's a way you get this a rim in faith. You shut the devil's mouth. Like, you don't even pay attention to him. I, I just said to my wife, the Bible says the seed of the righteous is blessed. I said, nothing can happen to this one. You see, the thing is this, this is a problem. A lot of you do not understand that faith is different from positive thinking. Faith, faith is not agidi. Faith is not stubbornness. Why? True faith is based on God's word. Not that, eh, I, I know, I know. No, 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 no. Faith is based on God's word. Now my son right now is 12 years old. Is the one that talks the most of, out of all our children. He's 12 years old. He's the one that talks the most out of all our children. I've seen people that the doctors, I, I, there was a testimony in the NLP. You know, they get it. I had a testimony on faith and I, I, it was difficult to get pregnant. Now I'm pregnant. I began to bleed. I bled for three days. He said, when I bled for three days, he said, I bled for three days and, you know, I thought I'd lost the pregnancy, but I remembered your teaching. He said, I held on to the word of God. He said, Pastor, I'm here to tell you I have my baby, even though I breathed for a long time. Pastor Lucas, family friend, right there. You remember the story? Give her the microphone. Let her, let her share the story. You can have your seat, Pastor Lucas. They will bring the microphone to you. They've been trying to have a child for how many years? Seven years or six? Six years. Sir. Six years? Yes. Then the London church. Exactly. Yeah, tell so, me. Yeah, so, so she got pregnant and what happened in the yeah, UK? Yeah, so she, she traveled to the UK and, you know, she had been stressed and all of that. And all of a sudden she started to bleed. And then she reached out to say, oh, you know, this was happening. She, she got to the hospital and um, the nurse came out, you know, and saw her. The nurse in London came out with an apology. Yes, yeah, what exactly. Did the nurse she say? hadn't seen the doctor yet because she was waiting to see the doctor. But the doctor came, the nurse came and took the symptoms. And, you know, when she heard, oh, she was bleeding, this, and she says, oh, I'm so sorry. Seems like you're losing the baby. And you know, and, and you know the thing? But well, that lady now had, what's the name of that child now? Olivia. How old is Olivia right now? Olivia is two years old. Two years old. Yes. The reason why is that our faith works. 
Stop behaving as if your God is powerless. Stop talking as if your God is powerless. Listen to me. So I'm saying, but I tried, and that's why I tried, but I crumbled. That's why you're here. So that you can add to your faith. Our God is not a God in the shrine that cannot talk. Amongst all the religions of the world, if you call it that way, Christianity is the only one that our God died and rose from the dead. Praise God. You see people in business, always small, small, small. You know, you, you cannot dare. Listen to me. Faith is chewing more than you can bite so that God can choose some for you. so that God can choose some for you. When you see the people, let me tell you something. When you see the people of faith talking, you always look and say, are they more than this? The reason why is that when faith enters, they don't talk from outside, they talk from inside. They talk as if the whole world is yes because they understand that faith conquers everything. Doctor says, you have seven days to say, okay, don't worry about that. I'll be back for treatment, but I don't have seven days to leave. We can fix that. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And I'm saying this because a lot of you married women here, your husband is not the same person you married. Because of life has happened to him, he has become less adventurous. He has become less risky. He doesn't believe and dream for things again. He has settled. He has moved from faith into fear. Because there's something about faith. Faith keeps you on the lane of the uncomfortable. You keep daring a macopala Torah. You keep daring things. You keep daring things. You keep daring things. You keep stretching. All of a sudden, when you talk to your husband right now, or your wife, honey, don't worry, I don't, you know. That was not how you were talking when you guys were in your 30s or your 20s. But as life happened, life submerged his faith. It's time for his faith to wake up. I mean, look at him and say, it's time for your faith to wake up. Many of you, you are too young to be on prescription drugs. At 32, you now have four tablets you take every day. Habba. He said no bam in Gilead. Habba. You, you take four in the morning, four in the evening. What is wrong with your faith? When are you going to get angry and let your faith consume the drugs? Didn't you hear what the Bible said? He said, he said no bam in Gilead. Bam means he said no medicine in Zion. He said, where are the physicians? Are there no physicians there? And is he, he is the great physician. There must be a difference though. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. And this year, the difference will be clear that you serve the living God. Yes. The things you've not been able to achieve, yes. grace and faith will deliver to you freely. Yes. Someone says, uh, you know, I, I'm a porn addict. Kabalu Parate Katora Sia. The Bible says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, any form of addiction shall destroy the law of sin and death. Praise God. I said, Praise God. James chapter 1, verse 5. Lift up your hands and pray in the spirit, somebody. Just, 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 just blow in tongues. Just blow. Blow in tongues. Just blow. Just blow. Just blow. I, I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. All of you online, just blow in the spirit. your faith. Stay up your faith. In Jesus mighty name. I hope you know that one of the reasons why we pray in tongues is for the stepping up of our faith. So when you feel the fear coming, you, you want to go for a meeting, 
you can tell that because they've told you that the vice president is there, the president is there. You're speaking to, hey, just begin to be you're just say, uh, restroom. Just go to the restroom. Bang. See, and that time, it's not the time you're not be saying, you're not saying, no! That's the time you go wild. I'm staring everything up. It's a matter of life and death. You go to the hospital, they say, the way I'm seeing it is a growth, but we're not sure if it's cancerous. He said, Doctor, thank you. Just let me go to the restroom first. Before it enters my spirit, before it develops root, you will enter, you will, you will say, Nepa. The Bible says, Blessed is my body. Blessed is my body. My body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. The reason why is that don't allow negative information take root before you deal with it. There was a time in my life I used to watch dollar every day. But it used to take a downturn on my body. Hey dollar, hey dollar, hey dollar, hey dollar. But now the law supplies all my needs. You know what that means? If the need is in dollars, the dollars will come. Praise God. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. It's time to stretch out. The reason why is that, let me, let me be honest, all of you watching from Asa, Nigeria, just give me, I want to address the Nigerians here. If you live in Nigeria, you will be, you can shrink in your thinking. I'm telling you, you make 10, you make 5 million and you think you're wealthy. You don't even make up to $5,000 again. And you just settle. You just settle. One thing about faith is that faith always challenges you to go for more. And the truth is that living in this country can be so difficult and depressing. But that's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. The reason why you're depressed is that you're walking by what you can see, what you can feel, what the government says. But guess what? I'm not walking by all those things. I'm walking by what God says. And the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. How many of you are afraid to marry because divorce rate is going high? Why are you not married? Everybody didn't divorce. Didn't you hear that when the angel of death was visiting all the house in Egypt, when they got to the house of Israel, he passed over. I will not add to divorce statistics. James chapter 1 verse 5. Are you, are you here? Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You know why I'm saying this to you? I'm preparing you ahead of time. Some of you, you need it right now. But some of you, it's ahead of time. Because you don't prepare for battle in the day of battle. You prepare ahead of time. So when battle shows up, your faith is built. Your faith is built. See what the Bible says here. If any man lacks wisdom, then now let, let me let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally. Liberally means freely and upbraided not. Upbraided is an old English word that means does not withhold. And it shall be given to him. Let me help you put it in context. It says wisdom, but that does not apply to wisdom alone. It applies to everything. If any man needs funding, let him ask of God. If any man needs a husband, let him ask of God. If any man needs an approval, let him ask of God. If any man needs a promotion, let him ask of God. If any man needs a property, let him ask of God. If any man needs a house, let him ask of God. If any man needs a visa, let him ask that give it liberally. And he does not withhold back. And the Bible says, and it shall be given to him. It didn't just say ask, it tells all what will happen to you. Look at the next verse. The next verse is very powerful here. Next verse is very powerful. But next verse now puts a small condition to it. It's a but, and this is what the problem is. It's a let him ask in faith. The question is that most people ask, but they never ask in faith. I'll give an example. 
when I was a younger Christian, I was below 18, I was below 18 years old, very 18 years old. Me and an older Christian were going to go out and it was threatening to rain. And we thought that we could just stop the rain for what we're going to like, like evangelism. So we came together and say, in Jesus' name, Father, we thank you and we'll stop the rain in Jesus' name. And as we're going, I picked my umbrella gun and the older Christian looked at me and said, what are you doing? I said, what? He said, that's your umbrella, right? I said, yeah. He said, but you prayed for the rain to stop. He said, you didn't pray in faith. Because if you pray in faith, you will not be making occasion for casualties. You are praying for God to provide, but you are tying it to your uncle. He says, let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. I did not understand that my taking the umbrella had cancelled my prayer. Because in the law of faith, action overrides everything. My action had showed where my faith was. So, you close your DM and you say you are looking for a husband. The reason why your DM is not open is because you don't think they are looking for you. And even when you have Instagram, do you post regularly? You don't know they are looking for you. The people that know they are looking for them, they post regularly because they are looking for me. Praise God. Are you here somebody? Some of you are looking for jobs. And you see, one lady said, I said applying 10 applications per day. Because I know they are looking for me. Because faith is not cheap talk. You know, there's a problem with charismatic Pentecostal. Oh, I have faith. I have faith. faith is not talk. Faith is action. What is faith? Faith is doing what you can so that God can do what you can't. You didn't hear that? Faith is doing what you can based on God's word so that God can do what you can't. So send the application for the contract. Go for the negotiation meeting. Do what you can. Let God do what you can't. What is faith? Do what you can't so that God can do what you can't. My God. You know what that means? The place you've been applying for contract, you go back there and says, yes, I just came to say hello to you guys. I know yes, I've been, you know, you guys must have been trying to reach me. I'm here. <laughs> and they look and say, <laughs> and the guy said, well, the reason why is that when you are in faith, you are wild. I'm telling you because people, listen to me. Did, did, have you not read faith? Read Hebrews 11. They were like stupid people. The Bible says the world did not extinct them to be men to be lived with. Sarah is older than many of his grandmother. She got pregnant. Can you imagine your grandmother having sex because of pregnancy? So, when we are talking about faith, I know it's word, but this is how it works. And unfortunately, the Bible says, unfortunately for a lot of people, fortunately for me and us, it says, the just shall live by faith. That means, when it says just shall live by faith, the same way app an iPhone can you use an Android app? A believer, the app you use is faith. Anything outside faith, you will malfunction. So the reason why your finance is malfunctioning is because you are trying to use an Android app on what? An Apple phone. And you are trying to use an Apple app on an Android phone. So you begin to what? Malfunction. That's why your relationship is what? Malfunctioning. You're malfunctioning. That's why your finance is what? Malfunctioning. Everything is what? Malfunctioning. 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 The reason why is that the trust, your operating system is iOS. iOS means faith. Not Apple, iOS. Faith. So, when you begin to walk in worry, you begin to malfunction. Have you noticed the area you worry the most is where you have the biggest delay? The reason why is that you're malfunctioning. So you know, you know, you know, you know, this is one kind of, uh, uh, you know, faith people, faith people, yeah, we are faith. No, faith is more than talk, sir. Faith is doing the ridiculous so that you can have the miraculous. 
Faith is doing the ridiculous. You know, when you have faith, you 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 will start talking. I was like, ah, excuse me, how old are you? Who do you know? Who is your father? Because your talk is more than your age. But that's what faith is doing the ridiculous so that you can have what? The miraculous. Didn't you read about Jesus Christ? He told the disciples, take water, go and serve it. He didn't say, taste it first before you serve it. Are you hearing me? Yes, at the wedding of Kedah. Remember at that wedding. Remember? At that wedding particularly, one, Jesus had never done any miracle before. So there was no pedigree to say he was a miracle worker. The guy now shows up and now says, take the water. Go and serve it as wine. He would have said, take it. Taste it. And go and serve it. He did not allow them to taste it. He said, serve it first. Ha. He said, start from the chairman, the most important person. I could imagine if some of you are the disciples. You'll say, Peter, sign out. That's it. That's it. Hey, Peter, sign out. That's it. <laughs> Thomas, like, you're going to do that, right? I'm done. I don't want to look stupid. I have a name to protect. I, I know my background. I know, I, know, I know my background, you know? I don't want someone to make me religious. I don't want somebody to make me stupid. I, I don't want, listen, I, I, I love God, but I, I, don't like, I don't like this. But the mother of Jesus Christ told them, whatsoever it tells you to do, he said, do it! He said, go and price the house. The house is too big on the banana. Go. He said, go to the store and test the, the, the Aston Martin. Test it. You are single. He said, go and look at where the He said, where's your husband? Why are you asking questions that is not your business? Don't you know that the thoughts of God are higher than your thoughts? If you can think like God, you are God already. So you can't you go and say, ah, Madam, so how? Huh? So does your boyfriend like this? He likes it. He likes it. He likes it. And there's no boyfriend. <laughs> but that's what it means when you say, We are living by faith. We are not living by what we see. We are living by what he says. Some years ago, Joshua can tell you, I was given this brown new, I, I got this brown new tear rubber. Toyota Prado, latest edition. And within a few months, the Lord just said, give it away. I know, when I got the car, I sold the other car that I had, so that we just had this kind of family and all of that. And I was, so it. He said, give this person. Not sell you, give somebody else. I was abroad when I heard the voice. I called my wife. I said, the car has been sold. She said, I understand. When I sold the car, I went from Toyota Prado, Tier Roba, what they call it, that class. You can imagine the kind of people that relate with you. You know that once you have a car, people in that car will start relating with you. <laughs> so I went from Tier Roba, Toyota Corolla. This is many years ago now. I went to taxi. There was no Uber that time. Taxi. Sk -s -s -s. <laughs> On the road, yellow cab. Hey, there was no Uber that time. Everybody said, asking, where is your car? I said, my car is in my spirit. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's no kind of car. You know, people just say, do you want, do you want? I said, what do I want? It was not up to three or four years after that time. I went to see someone just here. And as I was leaving, the guy just said, I have this Bentley I don't drive. He said, do you want it? I thought it was a joke. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah. He called his assistant. He said, take his house. Yeah. The next, I'm just telling you, you know what you love? That's the way you love. <laughs> That's the problem. Faith is not in the clapping, it's in the doing. I went to see a family in, in, in Kedja GRA and they did not have sold, sold my car. So when we left, they said, sold me off to take, to enter my car. I said, oh, where's your car? I said, um, it's well. I didn't want to explain too much. So they said, ah. So they should I drive a job? I said, no, 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 no. Don't, don't let your job. Let me, let me walk in honor. 
God said I should take taxi. I would take it with what? With honor. I took the taxi with honor. Three days later, she, the, she had had the BMW 5 Series that she was using. She bought a brand new. But she now got another car and she had stopped using it. And next thing I just saw in my house, they said we should bring you this 5 Series. And let me tell you something. When you tell the stories, it's almost as if God is a give and get, like a loto kind of thing. Don't be stupid, though. <laughs> Don't be stupid. Because these are pastors, the CVO, they'll say, if you give now, tomorrow, God is not... Baba Jebu. Uh -huh. So don't be stupid though. What God is really rewarding is not I gave car, I got car. What God rewards is the obedience. It's the obedience. Because faith is about acting on God's word. The question is this Can you dare to do what God has said? That's the question. Can you dare to do what God has said? You are saying, when I have money, I'll marry. God said, pick a date. He said, no, I'll not pick a date. When I have money, I will pick a date. You have cancelled your provision. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. How do you know you are, when you are in faith? How do you know when you're in faith? Romans chapter 10 verse 17. I will close with this few points. How do you know when you're in faith? Romans chapter 10 verse 17. I will just say two. There are seven of them. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. That's the problem. Because you are reading from your mind. Read it from the scripture. Faith does not come by Bible study. Faith comes by hearing. So, for you to have faith, you must hear. So, faith doesn't just come by reading the Bible. It's by hearing what God said to you personally. One lady in our church got married at 40. 40 years old. The guy she married, extremely billionaire guy. Responsible. Billionaire guy. The guy was about 45. Never married before. No, about 48. I said to her, I said, when you were 37, 38, 30, how did you sustain? He said, Pastor, let me surprise you. He said, I was not even bothered because God has spoken to me about my marriage. He had told me what my family would look like. He had told me what my child would be like. He said, so why am I worried when I've seen the future? The reason why you are not at rest is that you have no head. If you are your password, take cover. Listen to me. If you have seen your car, you will not doubt it. The reason why you are doubting it, you have not seen it. You have not had it. If you hear and see it, you hold on to it. When the doctors told me that I will have an operation on my nose and they, they probably told me my mother that I would die, I said, but God has shown me what I will do. It's my later years. How can I die? Will I be doing that as a ghost? <laughs> so, how does faith come? This is the thing. I said this to let you know. How do you know you're in faith? You will know you are in faith when you have heard. Many of you think faith is stubbornness. You want to use a giddy. You will just use your head to break cement. Neither is faith optimism or positive thinking. Or ambition that I'm just a straight guy. You know, no. Faith comes that head. I've heard. I've heard about this business. I've heard about this marriage. I've heard. So, faith commit not by stubbornness, not by inspiration. Faith commit by hearing. So, if you say you are in faith, excuse me, have you heard? Glory to God. You can read the Bible, but it didn't say the Bible gives faith. Because it said faith comes by hearing the word of God. The Bible and the word of God are not the same. The Bible contains the word of God. But in the Bible, there are words that are not the word of God. Because Satan also spoke in the Bible. Is that not true? Is that the word of God? It's not. Faith comes by hearing. So, how does faith come? You will stay, Rabataba. I want to teach you how to get this thing now. You will go into a seclusion. 
deep fasting and prayer with the word as you are reading the word out of the scripture scripture is graphe then rema rema you know rema spoken word Shapa. Oh, we're going to have NLP conference in the UK. Our team called me and said, there's a problem. They said, this person that is popular is doing a conference a month before you. After him, another person that is popular is doing a conference before you. Then, uh, then the worst one was that a day before us, in the same Wembley venue, there was a concert that had Nathan Ebassi, Dossi, Sinaj, Chandler Moore. All of them were there. He said, Pastor, we feel as if people will not come. I said, thank you. I went back. Man, and this is, a, this is the thing if you don't have a relationship with, this is the thing why faith cannot be a formula, it's a relationship. Because you need to hear. If you don't know him, how can you hear him? I went back. And he took me on a spiritual journey to the book of Acts. He said, he said to Paul, I have some people for you in that city. He said, it doesn't matter who came before or who came after. He said, I have some people for you. The, the, the guy said, if you want to do it, let's add more attraction to people come. God says, don't add nothing. Just go like that. So that no man will take the glory. You saw the videos. The people, the staff of Wembley told one of our pastors, he said, there's never been an, a free event as packed as this one we saw tonight. Many of you don't know this. Towards the end of the event, because of the crowd and a lot of things, about 200 white security came into the hall. All of you that were there, remember? You just saw them. You, know, you remember that? Just saw them. Because they were like, we don't want stampede, we don't want stampede, and this kind of thing. Just faith. Raw faith, sir. But how, how do you know you're in faith? Did you hear? Or you assumed? How would you even be married? Um, you know, I just know. I, because God knows I'm a good person. Mm. Hey. That's how you know you'll be married. God knows you're a good person. God, I, because I don't offend anybody. I've not been someone to have before. Hey, the Bible says we receive by faith, not by a good person, no. Praise God. Stand on, let us pray. Oh, wow.